And we're going to see what we can do with snakes this morning, right? <laughs> you know this, that the, the Bible is full of stories. The Old Testament is full of hundreds and hundreds of stories of uh, our, our faith life, our faith family from uh, Adam and Eve or certainly Abraham and Sarah on. Um, storytellers, and you may know this from English classes or something, storytellers often use a mnemonic device to help them remember the story that they're telling, right? So you can help me with some examples. Goldilocks and the three bears, three bears. yeah. The huff and puff bad wolf and the three, three little pigs. pigs, yeah. The butcher, the baker, yes. yeah, okay. Who does a bartender see walk into the bar? <laughs> Pastor, priest, and rabbi, right? Yeah. The device, the mnemonic device, is often called the rule of three, and it helps the storyteller and the listener know what to expect. You can maybe count it as the rule of four if you count Goldilocks and the wolf and the bartender as well. But it's often the rule of three. It seems especially helpful, I think, if you're a society that is dependent not on written books, but on oral history and storytellers to tell the story from one generation to another. You're dependent on accurate, trustworthy storytellers and their good memory. And any device that helps that is a help, right? So much of the Bible, I think, uses a device like that. Um, and I think it works like this. As you read those stories, people sin, people suffer consequences, people repent, one, two, three. And then by God's grace, God comes with healing in his wings, right? Sin, suffer consequences, repent, the rule of three, <laughs> and then forgiveness. This morning's lesson from Numbers, I think, fits that. The Israelites have been freed from Egypt, and what do they do? <laughs> complain, complain, complain. They complain about their hard life, and God sends fire into the camp. They complain about their lack of food, and God sends them so much meat, they get sick to their stomachs, and the Bible lesson says they vomit the meat out their noses. And then today, well, <laughs> it's in the Bible. Right? <laughs> and today, they complain about the leadership now, not just of Moses, but of God. And what does God do? God sends fiery, poisonous snakes to bite them to death. <laughs> this is the hard lesson, right? There are so many snakes on the plain that many of the freed people die right there in the desert. Never make it to the promised land. Now, to me, and I think to the text study this week, this story seems especially harsh. But it does come from complaining this time, not against Moses only, but God too. So maybe part of the lesson is when it comes to sinning, people have bad memories. And they forget simply that sin has consequence. Still, this snakes on the plane story is quite a challenge, I think, for our faith and for our belief in a good and loving God, right? Fire, vomit, <laughs> fiery snakes. In these stories, God seems to be pretty thin-skinned, quick to anger, and stronger in response to sin that we might, than we might uh, certainly expect or hope. And the Bible stories are clear. They lay these disasters uh, upon human sin, but also right at God's own door. God is the source of the fire, the plague of meat, the snakes that bite and keep on biting. It's the people who have sinned against God, but, but I think sometimes you almost get the feeling that it's such a harsh response. It almost feels like God is sinning against the people right back. The surprise for me as I read it is this, that when the people finally plead for mercy, 
when they turn around in repentance, God doesn't take the snakes away. They keep on biting. The consequence of their sinful behavior this time lasts a long time. Again, God had set them free from bondage and slavery, delivered them from their enemies, gave them trustworthy leaders to take them into the promised land. God protected them, God looked after them, and in their response, they moaned and complained about just about every step of the way, about everything. It was that three-step pattern. What they learned is that sin has consequence. It's a bitter lesson. It's a hard lesson to learn, even when the story says it comes from the hand and heart of God, when it's worked so that God manages to turn us around, right? The good news of all this bad news is that God's response fits a pattern as well. Now, I suspect that these old Israelite patterns are similar to most of us in our life. When we sin, and usually, or sometimes eventually, uh, suffer from the result of our sinning, we pray for the wisdom to repent, and for the grace and mercy of God to forgive us, and to heal us, and to set things right. And God does. Not so much because of what we do, but because of who God is. How God acts towards his creatures and his creation, right? Uh, this morning, it's a, it's a pretty terrible story and a pretty important lesson. There's a gospel word planted in this story about fiery snakes. Surrounded by snakes, God's people only had to do what? Did you hear it? Look up. All they had to do was look up. They were to look up at this newly made bronze snake pole and by looking, they would be healed. Just look up. When bit, just look up at what had been lifted up. And healing would come. As Paul will come to say in the other lesson, by such grace, they would be saved, right? You noticed, I'm sure, when the gospel lesson was read, this snake story with its bronze snake pole image, gets picked up in the lesson from John as well. John makes this connection. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must Jesus be lifted up on the cross, actually, so that whoever sees him, believes in him, trusts in him, will not die, but will be gifted with new everlasting life. And why is that? Well, John makes it clear, and you know this one, because God so loves the world, John 3.16. And if you doubt, then John 3.17, because God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world or to condemn us for our sin, but to save us and to save all the world, to give us new life now and new life forever, right? So our lesson well, I think sadly our life fits the pattern, that old pattern that humans have fit for generations. And it would be a story well told about us as well. We sin, we face consequences. By grace, we are turned around. One, two, three steps on our journey again and again. Since Adam and Eve, we say we've been snake bit by sin. That old rule of three, sins committed, sins suffered, sins exposed, but the key is number four. And by loving, strong, tender, lasting, loving grace, you and I are forgiven and made new and made whole again and again and again. By now it should be no surprise because we've learned this lesson. Because God so loves the world. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes understanding, <laughs> much like this first lesson. Uh, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.
As we sing the, the hymn of the day, um, there is a fourth verse down at the bottom. So the piano is going to keep going. <laughs> 